Good morning everyone, welcome to Our Small Footprint. My name is Nissa, and if you're new here, we are a family of eight who live off-grid in Australia. Today's video is a simple one. I haven't been spending a lot of time in the kitchen. It's sort of getting towards the end of our shopping period, which means that food is a less fun. Uh, but also it's been the weather has been pretty shocking. We've had more rain. It got down to 1.1 Celsius last night, which is really weird for November. Uh, we've had more ducklings hatch, more chickens hatch. So it's all just been very busy. So I wanted to do something really simple for dinner, but I wanted to feel like eating it as well. I have this tendency that if I cook things sometimes and it's not what I want or I'm not happy with it, I just don't eat. <laughs> Everyone else does, so that's fine, but I don't. So I try and make meals that are appealing even if they're simple. So I grabbed some beef off the shelf and some potatoes off the shelf and I made a beef and potato steak sort of a pie and I thought I'd share that with you so that you can see some of the ways that you can grab stuff off the shelf and do that sort of thing. I also did a sourdough cinnamon scroll uh, loaf thing but I wasn't real happy with it so I've chopped I've, you know added it in the end for years to have a look but it's it's not quite there yet. I'll share it when I figure out exactly how I want to do it but I put that there anyway so I hope you enjoy watching I hope it gives you some uh, inspiration to use some of the jars off your shelf in different ways rather than just pouring them out and heating them and I will see you again next time thanks guys So I started by making some pastry. Now I make it in the Thermomix, but you can use any food processor or you can even use a pastry cutter and do it by hand. Uh, it's super easy to make pastry. I've spent a lot of time trying to figure out the best ratios for us because we're dairy free and I can make a butter pastry perfectly, but making it without butter and finding the right combination of things that to work for us has been really hard. And I'm really happy with this now. I've made it a few times, this particular uh, recipe ratios and it's worked really well every time that I've made it. It holds together, you can pick up the pieces of pie, it's got that nice sort of a texture to it that it's it's short enough that it crumbles in your mouth but it's not so short that it just falls apart like a biscuit. Really happy with it. So what I used is 400 grams of flour with 60 grams of lard, 60 grams of olive oil and 110 grams of cold water. I've started putting an ice cube in my water as well because the water coming out of our Berkey's on a warm day is room temperature so I use a bit of an uh, ice cube or two in those and a pinch of salt uh, and then I just turbo it in the thermomix until it comes together into the little ball like texture and which is very similar to my pasta and I think that it may be mastering my pasta has helped me to master my uh, pie dough maybe I don't know it's just you know a thought but uh, really happy with these ratios it works really well so this is enough to make two bases or a base and a top uh, and with a little bit of extra leftover for decoration if you need it depending on the size of your pie dish of course so once i bring it all in together into those balls then you're going to tip it out and bring it together a bit more so i forgot to adjust my camera angle here it was a bit of a bad day for camera angles for me actually but uh, what happens is that you tip it all out into the onto a dough mat and bring it together with your hands. You don't want to knead it as such because you don't want to work it too much, but you do want to bring it together so that it holds together enough that you can put it into little rounds and stick it in the fridge for a little while. So you're going to shape it into a bit of a round because that makes it easier to roll it out and then cover it in glad wrap or beeswax wrap or something to keep it nice and moist in the fridge and you want it in the fridge for at least half an hour to an hour uh, but you can leave it for longer and if I've left it overnight before the next day I just pull it out and let it warm up a little bit before I start handling it is all otherwise it will crack a little bit so into the fridge to chill for a bit and then pull it out when you're ready to go so for the filling of this pie because this was such a simple day what I wanted to use was stuff I already had so I used two jars of diced beef this was from my quarter of a cow and i canned the diced beef so two two jars of the uh, diced beef that had been canned in stock this one and then two jars two quarts of the potatoes that i had uh, canned in chicken stock as well so we've got basically four quarts all up 31s aren't quite a quart or a little over a quart i can't remember but they're basically four quarts all up uh, so 
what I do is I tip all the excess liquid into the pot from those jars. Now, I probably should have only used the liquid from two of the jars, not all four, looking back at it now, hindsight and all that, but I tipped all four of them in there. And what you're going to do is you're going to thicken it to be the gravy for your pies. Now, you can thicken it in a variety of ways. You can use a corn flour or a wheat flour slurry, which is just putting a couple of tablespoons of corn flour or wheat flour into some water and stirring it so that it, it blends through and then slowly pouring that into your liquid that you're heating while you're stirring it, while you're whisking it, and that will keep it nice and smooth. You can use uh, bouillon in it. You could just use less liquid if you really wanted to uh, instead so they don't have as much gravy. Uh, there's a variety of ways of doing it. I, as I said, really simple night tonight. So I cheated and basically just used gravy powder. So I have this Maggi rich gravy, which is so very bad for you, but so very tasty that I buy from Costco. And I just put half a cup into the liquid and then whisked it it didn't thicken up quite enough so I stuck another half a cup in as I said I probably should have used half the amount of liquid and then it would have only been that half cup of gravy powder but I whisked it until it got it changes color it goes from that sort of a pale brown to a darker richer color as it thickens uh, and I just wanted to take it to uh, mostly thick I didn't want to overdo it because I was going to pour the rest of the product in there so you just want to thicken your liquid so this has stock like the the beef was cooked in the stock and then the potatoes are cooked in the stock and it was homemade chicken stock so all the flavors there are quite good anyway we're just adding a little bit more depth and a little bit more flavor and thickening it up so if I was to use like a, a flour slurry I probably would have added a little bit of bouillon maybe into the liquid just to add some salt or maybe a bit of Vegemite or uh, some Worcestershire sauce or something like that just to create that depth of flavor to the chicken stock because chicken stock is fairly light in essence and you want it because it's a beef dish you want it to have that little bit more depth so as I said I cheated used gravy mix and tasted really good anyway so once it's gotten to that thickened point you don't want to over thicken it but it is personal preference to be honest but it is going to cook further in your pie shells so if you thicken it too much now it'll go a little bit more gelatinous in your pie shells so once it was at a point that you're happy with I added all the solids so I added both jars of the cubed potatoes and the beef uh, you can break up the potatoes if you want the beef will all will break up automatically because it's like a when you can beef like this it ends up a bit like a shredded meat so it will automatically sort of uh, shred as you mix it through but you can break up the potato a bit more if you want uh, normally I would have used a mixed vegetable here not just potato normally I would use one of my soup jars like one of my beef soup jars and then that would have lettuce that was lettuce of course it's not going to have lettuce in it that would have uh, celery and onion and garlic and carrots and potatoes and whatever other vegetables I happen to can into that soup in it but when I went to the shelf today after deciding what I was making, there was not a single jar of soup left on my shelf. So the kids must have finished all the soups. Uh, there wasn't any sausage and potato soup, no chicken soup, nothing. So uh, I went with just the plain potatoes, which is fine. It just, I normally like to add a few more colors of vegetables into our meal. And I suppose I could have steamed some veggies to serve it with, but as I said, lazy meal, so I didn't. Uh, I forgot to turn the camera on while I was rolling out the dough. The camera was pointed at the bench, but I mustn't have hit the record button. Uh, but I have, I'll put a link to a previous pie video that where I've got rolling it out. But basically you just want to roll it into a rough circle that is maybe three centimeters wider in diameter than the pie dish that you're going to put it in uh, because you don't want to have to stretch it into the pie dish because if you stretch it into the pie dish when it cooks it will shrink and then you'll lose some uh, of the sides of the pie and that sort of thing. So you want to roll it out into a rough circle a bit wider than the pie dish that you're going to do and then you're going to lay it into the pie dish and gently press it into the dish as well again not stretching it you want to lift it at the sides and push it in so that it's it's fitted without being stretched because if you stretch it too much it will shrink when you cook it you can blind bake these pie crusts at this point if you want uh, i would put baking paper in there and then i use chickpeas as my baking beads and then bake them for 15 minutes this creates a bit of a skin on the crust and stops it from potentially going soggy uh, i found it as yes it's a great step especially with a sweet pie i don't find it as necessary with a savory pie it doesn't seem to make a huge amount of difference for us uh, so i again lazy day i didn't do that i just laid the paper 
pastry into the pie dish and then I filled the pie. So because I had so much extra liquid, I used a slotted spoon to do that. So as you can see, all the beef is shredded, the chunks of potato, and I just used a slotted spoon to get as many solids as possible. The gravy we can use over mashed potato tomorrow night or something because it's got shredded beef in it. So it's nice and tasty. Uh, so I used a slotted spoon and got all the solids out and filled the pie dishes. You want your pie dishes fairly full, slightly heaped in the center because that will stop your pastry from sinking. It'll create more of a domed top rather than a uh, sunken flat concave top. So you want sort of a heaped uh, amount of solids, but you don't want too much liquid because if you've got too much liquid, it's going to overflow the edges. So it's a little bit of a, a balancing act there to get enough solids to create that dome, but not so much liquid that it's going to fizzle over the edges and make a whole lot of mess in your oven. So I filled both of those pies as much as possible with all the solids. Now I only made one batch of the, pa of the pastry, so I'm going to use uh, puff pastry, store-bought puff pastry for the tops. Okay, so again, lazy day, this is what I chose to do. The puff pastry comes in a square. My pie dishes, the square is just slightly smaller than my pie dish with the corners overhanging. So what I find the best way to do here is that you curve the corners off the puff pastry. So you take them around into the pie dish and then your, your puff pastry sort of sits inside the pie. And then I take the excess of the short crust pastry and I tuck it up over the puff pastry and make sort of this ridging all the way around the edges, a little bit like a nice fancy pie crust where you've got your knuckles and your two fingers and you're making the fluting but it doesn't work quite that way when you're doing it like this because you've got to cover that puff pastry uh, it looks very messy when you do it but it uh, it cooks up really nice and you don't want to stretch that puff pastry because you, again you have that problem with it shrinks so it won't look as good so you definitely want to fold the excess short crust up over the puff pastry that will give it the best end result uh, so we that's what I did and I just sort of pinched it all together as I was going and made it all look nice uh, though it does look pretty messy when you're doing it like it, it's not as I don't know you, when you do it you sort of sit there and you go hmm is this going to turn out to look pleasant to serve to people but in the end I'm only serving my family and they don't care what it looks like most of the time just how it tastes so that's fine but you will be surprised that, that it just sort of it turns out it's it is rustic it is very unfinished but once it's cooked up and the the edges crimp up the way they do it looks really nice and pastry tastes good, so why have less pastry? Because everyone loves pastry. So once it's cooked up, uh, it took around about, I want to say 30, 35 minutes, about 180 to cook up. It's fairly wet in the middle. And again, I'm using a barbecue. I have to be careful with these pie dishes as well because they're a ceramic. So half my barbecue has open flame because it's a grill and the other half has solid, which means that I have to try and maneuver the pies into the solid section because if you have open flame underneath those ceramic dishes, you risk them cracking. I obviously have them up on my inverted colanders, the stainless steel colanders. That's how I bake in my barbecue if you've watched any of the other videos, but it still can be an issue if there is too much heat coming from underneath it will crack a ceramic dish so it probably take a little bit less if you had a bit more even heating in a standard oven but I reckon it probably took me 35 maybe minutes at about 180 in the barbecue to cook the both of them we did get a little bit of char on the top of one of them because it must have been a bit too close to the hood of the barbecue and the reflective heat was a bit too much but it worked out fine anyway the we're pretty used to juggling the barbecue these days and trying to make it work I think I need to invest in a six burner barbecue to have a little bit more space and put a solid plate on it and then that would allow me to put two of my half sheets half cookie sheets in there anyway that's off topic but anyway that's how long it took me to make it and it came out of the oven when I cut it up of course it was hot which is what we have a tendency to do everything gets served hot which isn't necessarily the best way to serve things but it came out hot and it was very wet so when it uh, when it got served it very very gravy uh, and the potato tend to spill out of the pastry but again it was we were eating it as a main meal it doesn't really matter to us if you do let your pie sit for a bit longer the the fillings do tend to coagulate a bit more and thicken up a bit more and they're a little bit more pleasant to look at but uh, it all tastes the same and who doesn't love a bit of extra gravy
so we served them up for dinner we did actually have uh, some uh, cinnamon roll sourdough I will put a small clip in here I made it but I'm not overly happy with it so I'm not sharing the the whole process of it but I did uh, fill some sourdough brioche with a cinnamon filling and then rolled it and braided it and put it in loaf tins to bake up every time I make a bit of a brioche dough like this I remember how much I prefer not to have eggs and milk in my bread doughs that I prefer it to be less dense and cake like and more bread like so I'm going to give this another go because it looked really effective but it just didn't it just it wasn't quite right and it also the weather was really bad yesterday so it didn't rise as much as I would have liked so here's a snippet of it anyway but uh, I'm going to do this one again and I'll share it once I get it how I actually like it uh, because yeah it was just a little too cakey for me and if I want a cinnamon cake I'll make a cinnamon cake this was supposed to be bread so but anyway thank you for joining me again today and I hope that gives you a bit of an idea of things you can do with some of your canned goods in a to make a quick meal but very satisfying and I will see you again next time thanks guys